Hey kids, me again. So as far as science goes, I want you to open up your science notebook just to where we were yesterday. So we got through very minimal things. Just the fact that a scientist's job is to answer questions about the natural world, which is literally just what's around you. And that questions cannot include opinions. So yesterday we looked at five um, different questions where we asked if it was testable or not. So if it was a scientific question. And as long as it's not making you choose between two things, as long as it's not asking for an opinion, you should be able to test that question. So what we got to yesterday was replication versus repetition. Replicate is just a fancy way of saying that someone is going to copy what you have done. So it might just mean that, um, it might just be that somebody was interested in what you did or that you see something and you want to see if you get the same results as that person. But in order for you to replicate their experiment, you need to follow their steps exactly. So if, I don't know, Mrs. Williams has done something that I think is really interesting and I want to try to do the same thing, then I should do it in the exact same order that she's done it. I should use the exact same things that she used so that I can hopefully get similar results. Because the whole purpose of somebody replicating your experiment or of you replicating somebody else's experiment is to see if you get the similar results because that allows people to know were the results valid and were the results true. So we wrote down that all science experiments must have at least three trials. And that's where the repetition and repeat part comes in. Those three trials will allow you to have more accurate data. Because if you just do something one time, anything could happen. You could just get lucky. Somebody could have interrupted you and you don't like the way it looked. Whatever. If you do it three times, then you are more likely to have accurate and clear and valid data. So how do I want to do this? Let's do this. Well, I guess I want to add some more to this. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm just in my science notebook. All I did was literally just flip the page. Um, I want to write down just two more little things here. I want to write down the word repetition. And I'm going to put repetition equals. Remember that repetition is the same as repeat. But I would like you to write down three or more trials. For accurate data. That is a word that we are responsible for. Repetition means repeat, but you need to do things at least three times, three or more trials, three or more times to make sure that your data is valid or accurate. One more thing we're writing down. I want you to write down the word replication. Remember that replicate is just a fancy way of saying copy. Replication means that someone is doing the exact, and I'll move in just a second so you can write things down, the exact same experiment that you have done to see if they get similar results. Now I'll move in just a second, give me one second. So here's the deal. I'm gonna hold this just like this so that we hopefully can see. Pause the video.
write down what you need, and when you're ready, unpause me. Repetition is repeat. So three or more trials for accurate data. You're doing the same thing at least three times to see if you get similar results each time. Replicate is copy. Either you're going to copy somebody else or somebody's going to copy what you've done to see if they get similar results. And if they get similar results, then that means that your experiment that you've done was valid or accurate or true. Here's what I would like to do. If you need to back me up, here go. If you still need this, pause me again. Finish writing. And when you're ready, for sure, unpause me, because I would like to throw some questions up. Um, I might be able to do it here. Let me see. Hang on, I'm not prepared. Do 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 do. Where's my one? Okay, let me just do it this way. Does this work? Okay, we'll just do it here. All I really need you to do is listen. Okay. So it says, which of the following decisions could be best made by using a scientific method? Before you choose an answer, I want you to think about which is something, I don't know what that is, that you could actually test. So A says, what game will be the most fun to play at recess? B says, which fertilizer is the most effective to use in your garden? C says which book you prefer to read from a reading list. D says how a volcano erupts. Which could be the best, nope, which decision could be best made by using the scientific method? What is something that you can actually test? Now, I hope that you can see that A and C would both be out. Because A and C for sure are both opinion questions. What game would be the most fun to play at recess? Somebody could say tetherball. Somebody could say basketball. Somebody could say, I don't care. That's an opinion for sure. The other one is what book you prefer to read. I could have a favorite book. Aaliyah could have a favorite book. William could have a favorite book. Mrs. Williams could have a favorite book. Darian could say he don't want to read the book. That's an opinion. If you are given options and you have to pick something, that is literally the definition of an opinion. So here's what we would have left then, B and D. I understand if you think that D could work, but how a volcano erupts, one way. The only thing that you can actually test, the only thing that you can actually have multiple trials for is which fertilizer would work best because you can try different fertilizers. You can put the same amount of different fertilizers in different parts of your garden and see what helps your plants or your fruit or your vegetables grow the best. That's something that you could actually test. Now, okay, they're telling you why B is the right answer. So the scientific investigation can be done to find out which fertilizer is most effective. So their thing for volcanoes says, volcanoes can be observed but cannot be tested in a controlled experiment. They're going to do what they're going to do regardless of what you want. All right, I want to try, I think it was just 19 and 20. There we go. Emma has done the experiment for her science fair project and has collected her data. What should she do next? Think about what we've been talking about. Think about what you know about science. She's already done the experiment. They want to know what she should do next. A says change any of her data that's different from the rest. B, analyze, which means go over her data and draw a conclusion. C, write a new hypothesis to agree with her data. Or D, estimate some additional data to make her conclusion stronger. There are three I hate. 
I hate C. You're never rewriting your hypothesis. You absolutely 110% are allowed to be wrong. You're allowed to make a guess and not have that guess be true. You're a human being. You're not a robot. It is what it is. I do not like that at all. I don't like D either because D uses the word estimate. And even just yesterday, hang on, we wrote down, if I can find it, never estimate. Estimate means that you're taking a guess. And in science, they don't want you to guess. They want your results to be true, which leads to me to why I don't like A either. You're not changing any of your data at all. Whatever happens in your trial, you're writing that information down and recording whatever it is that you either are measuring or observing. Even if it doesn't match what you think is going to happen, even if it doesn't match the other trials that you've done, you're still recording accurate data. That's your job. The only thing that would make sense to me here is for her to analyze the data that she has so she can start drawing a conclusion and thinking about why her experiment went the way that it did. So this next slide is just going to tell us it should be B. It says, science is always based on what actually happened. Scientists never change their predictions or change their data. And you analyze the data that was collected to try to understand what the data means and figure out why things happened. I think there's one more. I think this is it. Josh conducted an experiment using vinegar. Later, he wanted to repeat the experiment to see if his results would be the same. However, he could not remember how much vinegar he had used. What should he have done to be able to repeat his experiment? Well, guys, the problem is that he doesn't know how much vinegar he's used. But another big problem is, let's say I wanted to do this experiment. If this kid is not keeping accurate steps, he's not telling me what to use, how much to use, when to add the vinegar, I can't actually replicate or copy his experiment at all. When you do an experiment, you need to make step-by-step -step instructions that are like dummy proof. You need to be able to make sure that anybody can read those instructions and follow those instructions. So if this kid doesn't know or doesn't remember how much vinegar he used and they want to know what he should have done, your options either say, A, he should have tried a simpler experiment. No, he should have wrote stuff down. B, he should have used water. No. C, he should have kept accurate records of his experiment. 1,000% accurate records, write things down so that other people can replicate and copy your experiment. So it's to tell us at C. Oops, that's so me. Sorry. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. What I want to do is have you stay in your science notebook. But let's do this. Oops. In my science notebook, I'm going to draw a line. And then I'm going to give myself a heading here that says scientific experiments. I'm going to write down two sentences, and then we're going to look at some things. I'm going to write down or give myself a bullet point, and my bullet point is going to say that all experiments, and you can underline all, include one variable. Three or more trials oops, that's supposed to be an L. Sorry. Three or more trials and one control group to compare. 
And we're going to look at all of those things. So if you don't know what that is or you don't know what that really means, don't worry about it yet. All experiments include one variable, three or more trials, and one control group to compare. I just need you to understand that this three or more trials thing is just to make sure that you get accurate data. All experiments need accurate data, which is why you should be doing things at least three times. Now, we need to look at variables because they are allowed to give us an experiment and they are allowed to ask us what the variable would be. We have said before, especially when we're going over those nature of science, those homework questions in number one, you can only change one thing. What you change, that is the variable, but we need to look at things a little bit differently here. On my paper, I'm gonna write the word variables in capital letters. Underneath it, normally, I'm going to write, you can only change one thing. I'm going to put this in like a cloud. Any time you have an experiment, yes, you can only change, sorry, one thing, but there really are three different kinds of variables. So I'm going to come down a line or two, and then I'm going to put independent. I'm going to put dependent. And I'm going to put controlled. Sorry, hang on. Give me one second and I'll show it to you. So independent, dependent, and controlled. You can only change one thing, but there are other pieces in your experiment that you need to be able to label. Yesterday we talked about the fact that one of the questions was that, um, what was it? Which thing do hummingbirds, which color would hummingbirds prefer? Let me find it really quickly on my computer. Do, do, do. Here we go. The scientific question is, are hummingbirds more attracted to one color? But we also talked about the fact that that is a scientific question. That for sure is something that you can test. So we said that you could put up different colored bird feeders, yellow, purple, green, blue, red, blah, 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 whatever. But if you think about that as we go through these different variables, I think it might make a little bit more sense to us because so, I'm going to use that um, as an example. So an independent variable is what you change. So I'm going to put what I change. Guys, there can only be one thing that you change. Your dependent variable would be what you measure. We're going to worry about the control in just a second. If our thing is are hummingbirds more attracted to one color? Think about what you'd actually be changing. What would the independent variable be? If we're saying that we could have a yellow hummingbird feeder and a red and a blue and a green and a purple, whatever color it is you want to use, pink, what we're changing is the color of the feeder. So if you're thinking about what the independent variable would be, 
it would be, and I'm going to put EX for example, the color of the bird feeder. If we're trying to see what we're measuring, the dependent variable, if our question is, are hummingbirds more attracted to one color, this really is your data, okay? Because dependent starts with D, data starts with D. What we would actually be measuring is how many hummingbirds go to each feeder. If we want to know if hummingbirds are more attracted to one color, let's say you put up a yellow, green, blue, and red hummingbird feeder. Well, then you would have to sit there at the same time every single day, and you would have to watch that bird, those bird feeders. And every time a hummingbird went to the yellow bird feeder, you'd put a tally mark. Every time it, a hummingbird goes to blue, you put a tally mark. Goes to green, you put a tally mark. Goes to red, you put a tally mark. If that's what you're recording, how many birds are going to each color feeder, that's your dependent variable. It's what you're actually trying to measure. So if you're changing the color of the feeder, that's your independent variable. Your dependent variable, if we're going to use the hummingbird thing, would be how many birds go to each feeder. Independent would be what you're changing. Okay, that's one type of variable. Dependent is what you're measuring. That's one type of variable. Controlled variables are what you would keep the same. So I'm going to write what I keep the same. This could be more than one. I'm going to put that in parentheses. It should be more than one. Make sure you have what I have in my notebook in your notebook, because this is another type of variable. Okay? You can only change one thing in your experiment, your independent variable. Whatever you're trying to measure, whatever your question is, whatever you're collecting data on, that's your dependent variable. But if you think about that, if we're, let's say we're going to do this experiment, what are some things that you would have to keep the same? Because if your yellow and green and blue and red bird feeders are all different brands, it might not be the color that the bird's attracted to. It might be the actual type of bird feeder you have that it's attracted to. So one of your controlled variables would have to be the fact that all four bird feeders or five, however many different colors you're using, those would all have to be the same, exactly the same, except for the color, because that's what you're changing. If you put different types of bird food in each one, you're changing too many things. So if the bird feeder has to be the same, the bird food has to be the same. Because if you put different types of bird food in each feeder, they might be going to the yellow feeder because they like that food better. If you're testing the color, everything has to be the same except for the color of each feeder. So the bird feeders would have to be the same. The type of food would have to be the same. The amount of food in each feeder would have to be the same. You can't give those birds any reason to prefer one feeder over the other. So, oops, sorry. We're going to keep working on these. For right now, I just kind of want them in your notebook. But if you can only change one thing, your independent variable, everything else has to be perfectly the same for every single thing in every single trial throughout your experiment. Because if you change more than one thing, you have too many variables. You can only have one variable. I'm going to wrap this up real quick. I'm going to flip because I'm at the bottom of the page in my notebook. Um, we're just going to do, uh, how do I want to say this? 
Let's just do test groups. And put it in a little bubble. There are two different types of test groups. One would be a control group. And we're going to get this down and then we're going to continue to work on these things. We're going to continue to talk about these things. The other one would be your experimental group. Sorry, my pen's getting wrapped up in my phone charger here. Your control group would be the group with no independent variable. Your control group really means nothing is added. Nothing is changed. So if we're using the hummingbird feeder thing, if what your independent variable is, what you're changing is the color of the bird feeders, then you, we would need a control group, which means we would need a bird feeder that has no color whatsoever. So if we have a yellow and we have a blue and a green and a red, we would need one bird feeder that has no color on it whatsoever. So if those bird feeders are just made out of wood and we just have one that's plain wood, it's something where we're not changing anything. We're not adding any other color to it. It's the most natural one. But you guys, these control groups are so important because in an experiment, these would be used to compare your data. And I know it's a lot, especially if I'm not here right now. So just bear with me. All I'm asking you to do is write down what I have. Same thing. Your experimental group would be the group with the independent variable. Sorry. So if we're using the hummingbird thing, our experimental group would be the group that has the different colored bird feeders, the yellow, the blue, the green, the red. I know it's a lot, and I know it can kind of be confusing. This is not the first time we're going to talk about this. It's not going to be the last time we're going to practice. Just for now, make sure you have what I have. If you need to pause me to write everything down, please do that. And when you're done, unpause me because I want to wrap this video up. What I would like to do is have you use the next thing on Schoology just to look at some more nature of science questions. Think about what we've been talking about. Think about what makes the most sense because nature of science questions really are about using problem solving strategies. They're about common sense things, but you just need to think about what it's asking you. So all we're going to do is practice. It's not a grade, but you're not flying through it. You need to go until you can get at least 60%. So at least three of the five questions correct. If you can do that on the first try, amazing. If not, then you try it again. Because we need to be able to answer these questions. They could be some really easy point questions. 